untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Pack 1 pick 1 or rare, brilliant restoration, returning all artifacts and enchantments from our graveyard to the battlefield, can be a pretty sweet finisher for kind of a dirtly artifact enchantment deck, can be a few different colors, blue whites, maybe black whites, are probably the more common ones. What else? There's Selfless Samurai as an awesome 2-drop. Definitely like that one. Banishing Slash, another good white card. And there's a good red aggressive card with Etching. Anything else worth mentioning? The Guidebot perhaps for a modified deck as a card draw engine. Um, yeah, we can try out Brilliant Restoration. It's pretty slow, but I'm interested to see if we can make it work. Could be nice alongside a lot of sagas and other artifacts we can cycle. And starting out pack one, pick one with it means we can build our deck around it. Second pack, what do we have? An Izumi Prowler is always reasonable. It's also an artifact creature, so we could get it back with Restoration. Um, Roaring Earth could be nice for maybe a green-white enchantment deck. The white cards aren't particularly exciting. And... Yeah, I guess there's a Voltage Surge in red. Which is also okay. Tales of Master Sashiro could be good for green-white as well. So... I'm torn between Roaring Earth and Prowler. And I guess I'll give Roaring Earth a shot. And then hope to wheel either Tails or the Archer, which also play well with Restoration. So Green-White might actually be a, a nice archetype for it. Okay, well we got rewarded with some great green cards. No black cards in the pack that I really want. So between the Wrecker, which can Ninjutsu to destroy an artifact once we remove the Death Touch counter, or a Spinning Wheel Kick, which can potentially kill multiple creatures, and then an Arrow of Enlightenment we can hope to wheel, alongside a Golden Tail Disciple as well. I think the Ninja Turtle's pretty good. Lots of artifacts and enchantments in the sets, and a 1-3 Death Touch is still reasonable. Also would pair well with the Spinning Wheel Kick, combining it with a Death Touch creature. But uh, yeah, it's close between the two. I'll try the ninja. Ooh. Colossal Sky Turtle. Even if we don't play blue, we could still channel it. And then restoration it back. Plus we could still be blue-green for all we know. So I'm down. We're just drafting Turtle Tribal. Anything else worth noting in the pack? Not really. So yeah, let's take the turtle. So we're either green-white splash blue, just green-white using turtle for channel, or we could be blue-green still. Couple options here, including a nice dual lands, which is always worth picking up. Love me a spirited companion. And the... Uh, Merch Keeper is also quite good as a ramp creature. I think Companion just has too much synergy with what we're trying to do. As good as a mana creature is. I guess Keeper would be better in blue-green if we're just trying to ramp. So it's close. Man, just look at that art. How can you turn that down? Still want to keep the Brilliant Restoration dream alive. Okay, Terrarium's not bad with Restoration. And also just a good card, could fix for the Splash. There's also Naomi, but I don't know if we can really pivot into Black-White. I guess we could Splash Naomi off a Terrarium, but that requires me to pick up Terrarium in the first place. So, don't know if I can count on getting too many Terrariums late. It is still early in the format, so people might not respect it. So there's a tiny chance I could take Naomi and still end up with enough Terrariums. 
but maybe that's a little too greedy. Haven seems good, Cramp seems good, Archer seems good. So a lot of options. Probably go for Archer as just a good early blocker. Channel plays well with uh, Restoration as well eventually. And we also want early creatures for Roaring Earth. So yeah, I'm unlikely to move away from green. Still a tiny chance for just blue-green, but more likely to be green-white splash blue. So mana fixing's good. Don't think I'm missing out too much. Don't want to play prototype in this deck. Alright, so between Terrarium and Cove, I already have quite a bit of fixing for Sky Turtle. And Terrarium also helpful for getting quadruple whites, which may not be too easy otherwise. So I like where this is going. Could use a bit of removal. This pack doesn't have anything. Maybe I'll play a lucky offering. Maybe I'll play a sphere. I guess Trespassers has Channel, which is maybe better on the Splash. And then it's still an artifact we can eventually Restoration back. And Sphere is more like a heavy blue card that we want to be able to cycle early and potentially play and sacrifice in the same turn. Well, I'll keep taking artifact creatures, but don't really want to play Familiar on the Splash. Trespassers is still, you know, manageable if we have a couple blue sources, but Familiar is something we want to play on turn 2. Which is probably not going to be the case here. Hoping for some removal in enchantment form or artifact form. I guess prototype works. Can channel it. Modern Age could also be okay, but that also pushes us more towards blue as the main color. But it is a good combo with uh, Restoration, so is there still a chance we end up blue-white? Too many good green cards, I think. I'll take Thornwood Falls. Don't think I need Terminal. So more fixing is good. Blue seems very open. I'll take a Scour Barons, just on the off chance we get a, a Naomi later. So this is like four-color... Enchantments. Okay, our rare, sadly a black card. It is pretty good, but don't think I'm splashing for it necessarily. Uh, Born to Drive, more of a blue-white artifact, vehicle deck, card. Befriending the Moths could be okay. Also like the Greater Tanuki. Since green is still one of our primary colors, hopefully. Can ramp, and then we can get it back, so seems perfect. Fixes our mana, if we have enough green. And if we wield the moths, I'll be happy. Fade into Antiquity, also definitely a good one. Not a synergistic, but it is just solid removal in this set. Another Roaring Earth. Also plays well with the Tanuki. So maybe we take Roaring Earth and hope to wield the second Tanuki, since I've seen this one go pretty late already. And Arrow of Enlightenment would also be good. That's about it. Don't think we're going four color shrines, even though we have a reasonable setup for it with all the mana fixing. The deck might actually prefer the Tanuki over Roaring Earth, but I think the Tanuki is just more likely to wheel. So we might get both. Alright, well, there's another Shrine. Do like Favor as well, as a comma trick that's also something we could get back. So Shrine versus Favor. Kind of like Shrine because we have double Roaring Earth, so we can play it early to start putting counters on it. And we can probably wield this as well. 
tribute on the splash probably not worth it but definitely seeing a lot of good black cards in this direction what's next tails as a five drop Kami doesn't seem amazing so probably go for tails Another companion versus Master's Rebuke. Removal's nice, but how can I pass up on the companion? Especially with double Roaring Earth. This gives us a body, it draws us cards, which is more likely to hit my land drops to get more counters. So basically, it's like a 2 mana 3 3 that draws a card, is what I'm trying to say. Alright, Blossoming Sands is nice, so is the Sunblade Samurai. Can cycle it for a Plains, maybe get it back with Restoration. Yeah, it's also a creature. Intervention would be good, Fade into Antiquity would be good, although there's still a chance we wheel one. And both Sands and Haven for fixing would be nice. But this seems a bit more flexible. Ooh, Azusa plus Roaring Earth is a combo. Although there is also a Master's Rebuke, so a tough call. I feel like this deck might just be able to ignore spot removal and try and go over the top by just ramping and playing a bunch of enchantments. Got the companions to draw cards to maybe get those extra lands for Azusa's. It's close. Kind of just want to push these synergies as far as possible. Now we can take a Blossoming Sands without feeling guilty. And looking at the deck, wield the Fade into Antiquity, that's nice. So probably no need to splash too many blue cards, even though I have the fixing for it. Just going for Sky Turtle, and then we have the potential of splashing black as well if needed, but probably won't be necessary. I'll pick up the shrine. So now we have two, so maybe if I pick up another shrine or two, I can make that happen, especially if we get that five mana artifact creature that searches up a shrine. Who knows? I guess if the shrines are going this late, it's not too difficult to end up with a few. Don't think there's anything here that I want. So, one pack left. Small chance I splash Beetle, or maybe I'll need the trainee as a 2-drop. Ah, I've got enough 2-drops. Although I don't imagine playing the Beetle. Alrighty. Disrespecting the boar. Last pack. Oh boy. Another brilliant restoration, you say. I mean, it would make my deck more consistent having two of them. So... Why not? We did not wield the Tanuki, which I'm kind of sad about. But kind of expected that to happen. Yeah, I mean, what else are we taking? Repel the Vile would be okay. Could splash the Long Reach of Night. But that's about it. Alright, I might be into splashing Naomi now. The alternative would be another Sunblade Samurai, which would also be good. Exemplar would be fine, if not exciting, like just a 2-1 enchantment creature for the most part. Can maybe wheel another Fade into Antiquity if we need it. So might want to pick up a couple more artifacts now. Tanuki seems like the pick. Hope to wheel Favor or Haven. Hmm. 
And who knows, maybe we can still pick up another shrine. The white one would be probably the best one for us. So yeah, we've got four dual lands. A terrarium, which I'm happy I didn't pass up on. Double tanuki, which can also fix. So we'll just play one swamp, one island. What do we have here? Nothing too exciting. Can play the 1-1 one, one Death Touch. It's just an early creature that can trade off and we can maybe later get back with Restoration. Seems fine. I did just mention wanting more artifacts, but still don't think I want to splash a prototype when we don't have much synergy with it. So, sure. Yeah, having early creatures with Roaring Earth is also important. So, the one drop is pretty nice. So, don't need a ton more playables. Four lands means this is about 21. Couple cards I could see cutting, but not too many. Still not sure if we are going to get there on the shrines. I think I would need at least one more shrine plus a way to search them up. Here, liking the Preserver a lot. Good with channel, good as a 4-drop. Already have a Tails. And here... Tough call. Between Exemplar as 2-man enchantment creature. We do have a few ways to generate counters, so air would be okay, even though it's not an enchantment itself. And there's another Tails, which I think is going to be my pick. Since I don't actually have a ton of expensive cards, so I wouldn't buy an extra enchantment to also restoration back. And again, we have a decent number of two drops, so it's not like I'm desperate. Arrest seems good. Also wouldn't mind Arrow of Enlightenment, but probably want a spot removal. So it doesn't look like we're going to get there on the shrines, which is too bad. I uh, could play Network Terminal, which can also enable Naomi, because I don't have a ton of artifacts otherwise. Dockside Chef could be okay, but just don't imagine I'm going to play enough black for it. Another Terminal, perhaps. Also, ramps and fixes. Alright, so let's see here. Sadly, I'm gonna cut the uh, Goshen Tie of Hidden Cruelty. Don't know if I'm playing a second Fade into Antiquity. But I guess I'll still take it here. Alrighty. So yeah, one island, one swamp is plenty with all the extra fixing we have. Probably don't need lucky offering if I have double fade into antiquity. So that can go. One swamp, one island. And then we'll have to figure out the rest of our mana base in a second. Probably 117 land still. And then... Yeah, not gonna cut any of the top ends. So how many artifacts do I have? Three. Terrarium double terminal. So is Naomi good enough? Do I want to splash a virus beetle to try and make it better? Probably not. So this could be seen as a 3-drop. This has a ton of different modes. And then... Uh, yeah, 2 cuts. I mean, could try and get away with 16 lands, because we have so many like 3 mana ramp cards. But when I have double Roaring Earth, hitting my land drops is still nice. So... 
it's a tough call. I guess a samurai we could also land cycle basically. Could maybe cut one fade. Could also just cut Naomi, at which point I might just cut a second terminal. Yeah, double restoration. If I draw both, I'm unlikely to get value from both. But it just helps with the consistency of drawing one copy when our deck doesn't actually draw that many cards. So maybe Naomi is just too ambitious with only three artifacts, one of which I end up sacrificing for the most part. So let's just go to Terminal and Naomi and then call her the day. And then I don't need to splash black. So then the mana becomes a little bit more streamlined. So we've got nine green and eight whites. Need green early. Green can fix as well. Although we do eventually need quadruple whites. So maybe it is still in favor of whites. Of course I can just prioritize fetching planes with Tanuki and Terrarium. But if I just draw too many forests to begin with, that could be problematic. So I guess weirdly skew towards white still. Alright, seems fine. And then the one island should still be worth it in case we need to channel the turtle for blue or hard cast it. Even though terminal also fixes a little bit. Any other cards in the sideboard may be worth splashing or considering? Not really. Lucky Offering is an option over Fades just to be more mana efficient. But our deck generates a lot of mana, so that should be fine. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, Brilliant Restoration. Hopefully we get to actually cast it for value. But almost our entire deck is artifacts and enchantments, so it's going to be good if it actually resolves. How about the white dragon from uh, Forgotten Realms? Alrighty, let's go. On the play, definitely keeping this. Any hand with three lands and a spirited companion is just a snap keep. Got our early defense, a bit of ramp, and of course our restoration. Now we do want to eventually draw a couple planes since do need a lot of those, but uh, terminal can also help. Put on blue white, so potentially vehicles and mech titan core. If they can ever transform it, we could be in trouble. For now, let's go with the terminal tank for one. Not the easiest card to transform, but not impossible. Alrighty, I got all my planes that I requested. So probably just playing this and then I guess the Jeskai deck. Do I want a 4-4 four, four or a 2-2 two, two and a 3-3? Three, three? There are some 4 damage removal spells, like 4 damage to an attacking or blocking creature. In red there's a 3 damage removal spell. Um, it's a close call. I think I'll diversify. Could have also opted to use a channel ability instead, which maybe sets up our restoration a little bit better. Yeah, they could still have one mana here, but if they kill my companion, I'm pretty happy. So we'd love to draw some of our bigger creatures, whether to channel and then get back or just to hard cast at this point. Ask and you shall receive. So we'll hit for five and probably just hard cast Tanuki. Can also kill a flyer at instant speed if that's somehow relevant, but I doubt it. I guess there's like the rare 3-3 three, three flyer with flash. This may get countered. And a crab does exactly that. That's fine. As long as they don't counter restoration.
Is their opponent up to six mana potentially? It's gonna main phase thirst. Well, I might eventually regret putting the counter on companion if they're just gonna start blocking with the mech titan core. So still need to find something to add power and toughness to the board. And I'm not gonna want a restoration for just one creature, I don't think. Flying creatures we can answer. Alright, that's too bad. So now they can crew the core, so they can also block the preserver. Alright, never mind. So I can exile the mender, so they don't draw the card. Or I can exile the mech titan core, and then preserver can still attack. Long term the core might also be more problematic, so I think we still exile that instead. And then we can hit for three. Okay. Gonna hang on to the archer to maybe use the channel ability. Opponent's deck is likely to have a couple flyers. Alright, fall kills my preserver, or rather exiles. That is much better than destroying in this case when we're holding restoration. And a prototype. Alright, so we could be in a bit of trouble now. Might have to play archer as just a 3-3 to double block. Samurai is not bad. So... Now I could just cast this as a 5-drop. Question is if I also want to cast Archer. Because if they kill Samurai, then I still want to be able to double block the prototype. So I think I do empty my hand. And yeah, just waiting for the right moment to cast Restoration. We have the mana to do so. Sentinel 6-6 vehicle. So in hindsight, had we exiled the Circuit Mender, they were out of creatures to actually crew. Even the 1-3 is not going to be able to crew anything. And they're going to send the prototype just to make a pilot, I suppose. So they can crew the Sentinel. The reason to... Double or triple block. I mean, they could have a comma trick as their last card, but... I don't think I want to give them free card advantage, since I'm not planning to Restoration yet for just two creatures. And it does make some sense for them to just want to make the pilot. And if they do have a comma trick, then next turn we'll just chum block and probably have to go for Restoration. Alright, that worked. So your opponent can crew the sentinel, thanks to the pilot. But I'm also happy if they attack with it and we get to double block. Maybe should have actually held the land since we have those two roaring earths. Although at this point I'm more likely to channel it instead of just cast it for two mana. But that's an important one to keep in mind. So now if they attack, they might still have whatever trick they had last time. So I'm tempted to triple block. And then next turn pull the trigger on restoration, whatever happens here. Alright, they can exile my 4-4. Yeah, it's a little bit more painful than most other tricks would have been. So now we don't get it back. So it's still kind of a mediocre restoration. Tanuki makes it better. Alright, let's just cast this. Hope it trades, and then double Tanuki looks a lot better. Yeah, eventually Terminal can start looting as well, but have very few artifacts in the deck. Trespasser keeps my Tanuki tap down for a turn. Alright, so we're going to be taking 6. Yeah, again, kind of an awkward removal spell for us to face. 
still don't really want a restoration. So hopefully we draw something else relevant. Roaring Earth. Okay. So can do that at an instant speed to maybe set up an ambush. Probably enchant the forests. And then how many counters? Need to make sure it's untapped if I want to block with it. Three, four, five. So I'm one short of actually ambushing the Sentinel. It's only going to be a 5-5. Five, five. I guess that's still good enough. Can block the Circuit Mender. Take six. Ooh, Lizard Blades. That's scary. Yep. Yeah, now we might be in trouble. They can reconfigure onto the Sentinel. So that's now hitting for 12. Hmm. So I could chump and attack back. And then get back a bunch of stuff from the graveyard. Or I could take 12 down to 1, ambush the Circuit Mender. Put myself in a pretty precarious position. Yeah, I guess we're just chumping. And I'll still get my Roaring Earth back, at least. Probably fine to attack and then just chum block their double striking sentinel or what have you. And apply a bit of pressure here. A land would not be bad, because then we get to trigger Roaring Earth. Where do I put the counter is a question now. Companion's probably reserved for chum blocking, so I guess Tanuki is fine. Opponent getting rid of Octopus, so their hand must be pretty good. Ooh, Cloud Steel Kirin. Okay. Well, we do have another archer to destroy it until I guess it turns into an equipment. And then a second fade into antiquity. So I've got a couple answers to it. My archer has reached, so don't think the mender is gonna be attacking. All right. Maybe our opponent just wants to draw. Or they didn't read all my cards. Which is seemingly the answer. A new set, new cards, people make mistakes, it happens. Alrighty, new game. And we've got a nice opening hand. Companion to hopefully draw more lands, Azusa, eventually Restoration. Up against blue-whites, and there's Companion. Probably fine playing Azusa first. Next turn, Terminal plus Companion. And hopefully draw into some big expensive cards. I 
A recover unit can recover companions. Alright, can stop drawing the lands now. Tesseret. Yeah, planeswalkers are good and limited. Didn't think we have any immediate answers to it. And it's probably gonna beat us in the grindy game where we have restoration. So it's not looking good. Need to draw like a tanuki right now, pretty much, to stand a chance. Wow, opponent's hand is stacked. Discarding an arrest. Probably no point in attacking when they have a restoration or a recovery unit. Which could bring back companion after trading. Although I guess we also kind of want to trade for restoration, but... At least we'll get to see a Tesseret emblem. Alright, they had another arrest. Alright, turtle to the rescue, maybe? One can hope. So, let's see. Casting it seems to be the most logical answer. Could also bounce something back, that seems medium. Yeah, let's just play the turtle. And yeah, hopefully that can keep Tesseret in check. Could have bounced Tesseret itself. And then try and Restoration back Turtle. I think just killing Tesseret is uh, going to be the best solution. Although given what they discarded and cast, one can assume they have removal for Sky Turtle. Although it's possible that the Ward 2 Makes it so they don't have the mana to cast whatever removal they have. I reckon our bank busters, our opponent's deck seems stacked. At least the 4 damage from the Wanderer's removal spell is not enough. But they could still have Exile Creature Power 4 or greater and pay the ward cost. So... Let us attack. Alright, that's too bad. So Tesseret can emblem. I guess they don't have a ton of. I guess they could have emblemed last turn even. But yeah, I guess her opponent doesn't have a ton of artifacts in play. So we'll see. So maybe given that they could have already ulted last turn, I should have just gone for the Bounce Desert Channel ability, and eventually Restoration back Turtle. The major problem here is that Blue White isn't going to destroy the Sky Turtle, at least not likely. They did actually have the 4 damage instant in hand. Alright, 3 cards in hand, the Tesseret on 8 loyalty. So, we'll see. Colossus, that's scary. So, at least they wouldn't be able to crew any of their big vehicles. Can add a counter to my trampler. And knock down a few loyalty points. Next turn we unlock the Sky Turtle. Forest I should probably keep in hand for Warring Earth, although then again... I could also get in a situation where I want to cycle something and then still Restoration. 
and I can also channel Roaring Earth, but then of course I can just play the land first. Eh, opponent turns Colossus into a creature permanently, so 7-7 seven, seven now. Only modifies the power toughness to 4-4 four, four if it's not a vehicle, so they can crew both. All the recovery units we could block. Of course they could have a trick, but we'll find out. Tanuki's not bad. Okay. So, probably want to kill Tezzeret. And then, sadly can't put the counter on Tanuki. Probably still Turtle. And then I can double block Colossus with Tanuki and Companion. So we might still mount a comeback. Opponent got to see a lot of cards, so whatever bombs they have, they probably drew. They even discarded Bangbuster, which was surprising, but it is an artifact, so it means they uh, could potentially discard just one card. They've got Awaken Awareness, turning my turtle into a 1-1. But yeah, we can still double block Colossus. I could even jump with Sky Turtle just to restoration it back. So, not hitting my position. After opponents control the Planeswalker for what seemed an eternity. So, Turtle can attack. And then we just need to find an answer to the Colossus. Antiquity will do just fine. Double hanger, so opponent's pretty serious about crewing their vehicles with it. Which is why they were struggling maybe earlier to turn them into creatures. They're looking at their graveyard. They might have some recursion here. Get back there, Bank Buster. And this seems fine. Alright, so now they've got a card draw engine. So that may be able to catch them back up, but a Fade into Antiquity deals with Colossus and opens the floodgates to attack. Opponent can crew. I'll happily attack into it. Opponent's gonna double block Tanuki. Alright, awesome. That worked. Still have our restoration. And yeah, we can wait. Two cards in hands. Yeah, I guess maybe Tazeret's not as game ending as I thought it was. Blade Blizzard 2-2 two, two, Double Strike, that's fine. Would love for them to kill my turtle. This destroys, alright, perfect. Now Restoration's looking a lot better. Although, a Roaring Earth also seems pretty decent. So, Roaring Earth for 9. 
Yeah, that seems good enough. Or I guess it's seven here. And our opponent's forced to trump my 7-7, seven, seven, so companion can attack. And looks like we didn't even need restoration. Just a lucky turtle right when we needed it. And that does it. Awesome. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand looks totally fine. Ooh, a blue-black ninja deck could be quite effective. Don't have any reach creatures in hand at the moment. So fast ninjutsu start could be problematic. Looks like blue-white instead. Roaring Earth, I might actually play as an enchantment this time around. Prototype. Yeah, that's not great for me. So our opponent is going to get to potentially crew, but it's not like I'm going to chum block, so... We'll hit for two. Next turn I can play Terrarium and sacrifice it. So that's two counters total, we could have a 4-4 companion. And then Tails on five. If they remove companion we're in trouble since... That's where all the counters are going at the moment. Opponent unable to crew the prototype. So now... Could be worth it to keep the companion on defense to prevent them from making too many tokens. The one concern is if they can exile a creature with power 4 or greater. Then uh, putting an extra counter on companion would actually be detrimental. But I'm gonna go for it. And pass. And then next turn, our tails will give vigilance so we can attack without any concern. Alright, so we're putting not doing a whole lot. So that's good for me, I guess. My hand is all lands, so... This Roaring Earth is delivering... Uh-oh. Voltage Surge. At least they had to 2 for one themselves for it. So now I maybe wait on Tails. Play Wrecker first so that can pick up some counters. And could technically trade for a prototype as well if they manage to crew it. Mech can fly over and crew stuff. Still missing the creature to do so. Ooh, Azusa. That's kind of exciting. So, we want to Azusa first, otherwise I can go Tails into Azusa. And hope there's no removal. A Roaring Earth is comboing off here. And I'll gladly destroy their mech. Probably the flying one. And our turtle's only gonna get bigger. Alright, Pona's got a nice 4 4 flyer here. But I don't think the prototype is attacking. Well, it would be nice to draw something other than a land, but uh, at least it still gives us a counter. Do have Vigilance for now. Next turn I can put a counter on my 5-5. Five five. No Death Touch counters left, so can't destroy anything. Opponents on the Beattown plan. Uh, 
and uh, Fall can exile my... Oh, never mind, it's... Creature with mana value, so can actually exile my Saga. So I'm surprised they played it now instead of waiting an extra turn. We get a bunch of creatures. And I guess we'll diversify. Although if I make this 7 powered, then Preserver makes it lethal. It's actually like moving it there. Because we can only put one counter on each creature. They're likely still chomping, but... Alright. And then... I guess I'll still channel here. Could also just cast it for 4 mana. Give us an extra threat. Don't think it matters. Well, that's definitely the best Roaring Earth as a 2-man enchantment I've seen so far. It seemed like we were in trouble at the start if our opponent had any way of crewing their vehicle, but... Luckily for us, they didn't. Voltage Surge kills Preserver, and our opponent explodes. And we're on the draw with a Keeper. Ooh, Turtle's exciting. So turn to... what do we want to play? Against Red-Green. Ooh, Eater of Virtues is scary equipment. Alright, Tanuki is interesting. So... I might play the Archer and then next turn go Roaring Earth, play Land After. Could have also gone the other way around in case of a 3 damage removal spell here. Alright, so Invigorating Hot Springs, our point setting up, but we drew a Restoration, so we can do some powerful things as well. Sky Turtle can bounce something and then we can still... Uh, Get it back. For now, just set up our defenses. Next turn, can Terrarium get a land and play it, or channel Tanuki. 3-2 Trampler, now 4-3. Opponent's gonna hang back. And I guess if we Terrarium, I can keep up the bounce from Turtle, which may come in handy. And I want to Plains, since we need a lot of white. Could also sacrifice Terrarium. think I'll end up using the Turtle here. Yeah, opponent's putting another counter on it, so they're moving all in. I could block, see if they have a trick. And then we get to punish them even more. Oh boy. The complete blowout. Unless they've got the hexproof trick, which they don't. That felt pretty good. Now, Tanuki can find a land. Could also exile one of their things now. Long term, Eater Virtue might be more problematic. Although I kind of like just ramping with Tanuki. I guess we can do that at instant speed, so no need to do it now. Since the land comes into play, it's tapped. Alright, so we'll pass. And then next turn I'll be able to play Tails. Creature does have defenders, so... That's a little awkward. If you're drafting blue-green, in blue there's the 3-drop that lets your modified creatures attack as if they didn't have defender. Good combo with the Bamboo Grove Archer to keep in mind. And 
than in other planes. Companion's nice, but... Play Tails. Get that going. And our opponent needs to get past the 7-7. Seven, seven. It's gonna be difficult to remove for red removal, but maybe like another fade into antiquity from our opponent could get there. Could get rid of Buseju, which will eventually turn into a creature we want to get rid of. Uh, probably fine to play Companion first, see what we draw. And then I can put the counter from Roaring Earth on my creature that can actually attack. Or I could get rid of the Eater of Virtue. Um, Buseju is going to be pretty large. It's not like I have an amazing answer to it. So, yeah, I could be convinced to get rid of Boseju over the sword. Yeah, I don't have to get rid of Boseju now. Can always wait for it to become a creature. But, uh, seemed like an efficient use of my mana. And next turn I can play a second Tails to grow the original to maybe get past a 5-2 on defense. And Restoration is shaping up to be amazing with the Tanuki and Turtle already in the graveyard. Opponents got their own Tails. And the bear now is 7-4. Yeah, probably play another Tails here. And then could put counter on Companion. Alternatively, I can channel. And then channel Preserver as well, so I can channel twice, putting counter on Companion from Roaring Earth and one from Preserver, so it trades for Bear of Memory. Kind of like that too. So let's attack. And see what happens. They might just trade for my 5-5. Five five. They don't. In that case, I think I still do this. Since we want to get these in the graveyard anyway. And now, probably fine to get a forest. And then diversifying is probably not a bad idea. Bonus at 10. And look at this graveyard just waiting to be returned. Still have our 8 8 snake on defense. Quite a danger noodle. And our opponent doesn't even need to see a restoration to throw in the towel. We're on the play. My hands, not ideal. Any land lets me play Terminal, which fixes for green. The problem is Azusa and Roaring Earth don't do much with only two lands. So it's probably still a mulligan, sadly. This I can keep. And... Network Terminal probably better than a Forest, since I don't have a 3-drop. And it fixes for the quadruple white we'll eventually need, and the blue. Speak of the Devil. Opponent Red Green. Song Shaper. Well, I can attack and if they take it I just destroy their 2-drop. Still good value, even though we could maybe get even greedier. Could also keep Turtle back, but they're likely to grow this, and then it would be a trade. Unless I use Preserver. Although I think I'm going to play Preserver as a creature this game. As we draw the second Restoration. Not the first time that happens.
Alright, Hot Spring is scary. Tanuki is not a bad draw. So Preserver... Grow Turtle seems fine. And then Tanuki can get uh, another Plains. And then we're happy for a creature start trading. We're down two cards from the mulligan and being on the draw, so... Restoration is going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting. Trainee gets plus one plus one when it becomes blocked, so... Can't attack into it, sadly. Or block it. Coiling Stalker, 2-1. Okay. Well, Tanuki, we can channel at instant speed. And I think we're just going to play defense. Try and weather the storm. And any trades is good for us. So... Now do I still want to double block? Grows up to a 4-4. This they can only use as a sorcery. If they have a boar, let's say, plus 3 plus 1 trample, then goes up to 5 toughness, would still trade. Yeah, I think that's fine. If it's the green channel trick, that would be more painful. Right, trade happens. And Tails, yeah, that's a good one. Ooh, Turtle, perfect. So... Now... I could get back... Tanuki from the graveyard to ramp into Restoration. Or I could bounce something, which is also appealing. Uh, if I turtle back Preserver, I could also Preserver, so a lot of things we can do at instant speed. Question is if I want to attack. If I plan to bounce the Stalker, I guess I could attack, but probably want to wait for them to maybe use some counters first. They might use another Hot Spring counter, for instance. Alright, so... Now I could block Turtle back the Preserver, and then put a counter on the Wrecker to turn it into a 3-5 to make this a favorable block. It's a little sketchy for opponent has a pump spell, and it doesn't leave us with the mana to cast Restoration if... I don't turtle back the Tanuki, which we otherwise could cast next turn. So, yeah, maybe we'll just go for the Tanuki line of play here to guarantee getting back a bunch of stuff. Which makes me maybe regret not attacking with the Wrecker, but so be it. So make sure I tap properly. Alright, Fade into Antiquity. Could also get rid of the Tails, but we can still do that when it's a creature. So, let's get back some beefy creatures. And counter on Turtles seems fine. The big one. They could have the Reach, Cycler or Channeler to destroy Turtle, but they also need to pay the Ward too, so that's 7 mana total. Opponent gets a 5-5, five, five. can make it a 6-6. Six, six. Triple block everyone except Turtle. We're happy to trade, but still have the fade. 
but with another restoration in hand, I don't think I need to take any risks. Trades are good. So if they have the two mana instant, they could kill Tanuki, then kill my two other creatures. Yep. Nope, it's an indestructible trick instead. Aha, uh -huh, and... Okay. Fair enough. So, that was a pretty nice sequence, although they did use two cards for that. And we still have our Fade into Antiquity, so not too concerned. I uh, could also play the Fang to just block. Although eventually we'll want to get rid of this, I imagine. If we play Fang and pass, we're just kind of prolonging the game when we can probably just end it. Preserver attacks. And the second restoration should be the final nail. So, can attack first. The Wrecker, not an enchantment sadly. Perfect. Get even more value. And that should seal it. Awesome. Perfect way to end this draft. Double restoration. Second copy still came in handy. So, yeah. Not a bad draft strategy. Just pick up lots of enchantments and artifacts we can sometimes sacrifice. A little bit of ramp, some big plays, and the channel creatures especially, the Tanuki and the Turtle, were our two best cards alongside Restoration. So let's crack some packs and go pack one, pick one. That's the fun thing about a new format is I still have a lot of packs, and 13 packs even, so you get an extra long pack one, pick one segment. And a rare March of a Reckless Joy. Well, I've been pretty impressed by the white shrine when the opponent had two of them. It is still only a 1-3, so a lot of removal can answer it. But yeah, if you can get two shrines in play, it is pretty powerful. The Master's Rebuke, also a good removal spell. So I think it's close between the green removal, the shrine, and the red instance, which can provide a bit of card advantage. But uh, yeah, it's... Definitely still a close call. Ooh. Yeah, Kaito is good. Good incentive to draft the ninja deck. Nothing else that comes close in this pack. Invoke Calamity. Probably not a card I want to first pick. Spinning Wheel Kick and Life of Toshiro seem a lot better. And of course Spirited Companion, always a safe pick. Weaver of Harmony, nice build around for a green-white enchantments deck. Plays well with Sagas, so definitely a first pickable card. The Blue Shrine also pretty decent good with other ninjutsu cards, because it doesn't have defender, so you can attack with it and ninjutsu. And then if you have any other shrines, it starts going off. This is probably the worst rare in the set, so won't be taking that. Buseju, on the other hand, seems decent. And Touch the Spirit Realm, also an awesome removal spell. think the white removal... Probably better than Boseju, but both are reasonable. My Ganjo Uprising, one of the more controversial rares, have yet to see it in action. I think it's good, but not great. Yeah, probably better to take a Selfless Samurai than the Uprising. It's more flexible, goes into more decks, and it's individually powerful. Probably better than Master's Rebuke, even though it's a great removal spell as well. The Dragon Kami Reborn, one of the quirkier rares. 
could be good in a ramp strategy, maybe similar to the one we drafted with lots of big channel creatures you can potentially hit. Still not an amazing rare, but playable. And out of this pack, you could justify taking it over the Merge Keeper or even the Crab, which is also quite decent. The Subduer, if you like, aggressive strategy is also good for the Warrior deck. Spirit Sister's Call, a fun build around Mythic. I've yet to see it in action, but should be manageable to get a lot of value out of it. So far the games have seemed relatively grindy, so you should have enough time to leverage an enchantment like this. Although of course there is also quite a bit of enchantment removal floating around. And otherwise a couple good removal spells with lethal exploits, voltage surge, and the black shrine if you want to make that happen. Another Boseju. But would probably give the mythic a try and pack one pick one. Invoke Despair makes you commit pretty heavily to black. So not the best invoke rare necessarily, but certainly playable if you can cast it. Which is a big if. This pack almost all black cards. So I guess you could take it and give it a shot. Nothing else too exciting. Ooh, a Lizard Blades has to be the pick here. Awesome creature at 2 mana and reconfigure makes it even more deadly. Probably want to be quite protective of the Lizard Blades and avoid trading it so you can keep it around as an equipment. Asset Capture also decent, although has some limitations. We've experienced lots of creatures being actual sagas, so they're not actually creatures you can counter, even though they eventually turn into enchantment creatures. And then Ninjutsu also gets around counter spells nicely, so Asset Capture not maybe as powerful as advertised. Thunderous Raichu, awesome for Constructed and a bomb Unlimited, so definitely take it here. And yeah, the Blazing Sky also seems worth first picking. Don't need to think too much about it. And last but not least, another March of Reckless Joy. Yeah, I mean... Could take another Selfless Samurai, Tanuki for the ramp strategies, Silencer is okay for the Ninjutsu deck, so there's a couple options. Alrighty, want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.